This video is sponsored by Modern Metal Songwriter. Stick around till the end to find out more. Gibson guitars and Les Paul specifically are a topic that has polarized and split the entire guitar community in two for the past however many decades. Now this is for a multitude of reasons, but the most popular one you'll hear people say is build quality. There are people like myself who don't enjoy the playability or the neck profile of most Les Paul guitars or who simply don't enjoy the single cut shape, but the most popular reason is build quality. Boy do Les Paul guitars like to break. So enough beating around the bush, I got something to show you. This here is my original 1995 Gibson Les Paul Studio, and this here is my f***ing hacksaw. But before I'm about to commit the biggest sacrilege in guitar history, take a listen to how this big hunk of wood sounds. Alright, let's back up a little. Les Paul guitars are generally prone to breaking around the headstock area, and this is common knowledge. There have been memes about this phenomenon pretty much ever since internet memes have existed. Now, this particular Les Paul studio from 1995 has already had the headstock break off once, and while this was professionally repaired whenever it happened at some point between 1995 and now, all a professional does is glue the head back on and hope for the best, which usually isn't good enough and the guitars end up relapsing. Now, as I said, I don't like Les Pauls in general, but I bought one for the purposes of this video, and the fact the fact that it had already had a headstock repair makes it an even more perfect subject, because the best way to prevent a headstock from falling off is to take matters into my own hands. So while that rusty slasher movie-esque hacksaw I was holding was a bit of an exaggeration, this video certainly is real. Commence the sacrilege. So now that that's done, the next step is an easy one. Let's remove the two nomadic bridge. Removing the bridge itself is of course a piece of cake, however I found myself struggling to get the bushings out of the guitar. The classic drop in a screw technique worked for a while, but at some point even that had reached its limit and the bushings both got stuck. Really stuck. So after days of not knowing what to do and hardly advancing with the project, a big supporter of the channel who does woodwork professionally taught me how to essentially create a makeshift bearing puller in order to brute force the bushings out, which worked like a charm. Now, given that the end result is supposed to be a functional headless guitar, I had to find something to feed the strings through where the headstock used to be that the ball ends would get stuck on so I could feed the strings into this headless bridge I got for 50 bucks on AliExpress. And after measuring the distance between the nut and where the neck now ends, I figured out the perfect solution. A Floyd Rose style locking nut. See my, my concern what well, ah sh it's so crooked. I, I'm gonna k myself. Alright, I fixed it. I went and drilled some holes into the bottom part, if you can I don't know if you can see that down here. So now the slant is you know slanting towards the nut, which will allow strings to sit comfortably on the actual nut of the guitar and then be fed you know, into the bridge. Now back to the bridge. In order to attach the new bridge, I first needed to fill the bushing holes that the two nomadic bridge left. I did this by later cutting a bunch of perfectly sized circles out of some leftover scrap wood, shoving and gluing them in the holes one by one, and shaving the excess off the top pieces with a sharpened chisel to fit the contours of the guitar. Then I painted the wood black with nail polish. The only thing left to tackle now before attaching the bridge was the grounding issue. The way a standard Les Paul is grounded is through a wire inside the bottom right bridge bushing hole, 
which the bushing pushes down on, thereby grounding the electronics. After pulling that wire out, I realized I cannot solder it to the bottom of the new black stainless steel bridge, so instead I cut out a small slit for it to sit in, scratched the black paint off the bottom of the bridge, and screwed the bridge down on top of it. This should, in theory, yield the same result as a bridge bushing sitting on top of it. After putting on a few strings, the first thing I noticed was the locking nut was trying to come farther off the neck with every string I added, so I had to reinforce it with some bigger, thicker screws. And secondly, I had severely underestimated how high the bridge should be sitting, so I took it off again, put 5mm of wood underneath it, and that did the trick. Now, string up, tune up, and here is the less Paul. <laughs> This video has been sponsored by Modern Metal Songwriter. MMS recently dropped their brand new Clairvoyant amp suite and the tones you just heard me use are my own Clairvoyant presets. Clairvoyant is a no bullshit multi-amp suite made to waste as little of your time as possible and allow you to get straight to songwriting. It features three channels, low gain, medium and heavy, five essential effects, a tube screamer style overdrive, fuzz, an instant lo-fi radio effect, delay and reverb, and the tilt and enhance controls to let you shape your own unique tone within seconds. You might know how I usually feel about amp simulators, but even a passionate critic like myself has to admit that this suite absolutely rips. Now if you're too lazy to dial in your own sound, despite the fact that Clairvoyant's no BS interface allows you to within seconds, I, alongside some legendary musicians and producers, have created a few presets to get you the tone you're looking for instantly. So what are you waiting for? Go grab Clairvoyant through the link in my description for the low low price of $69, <laughs> nice, and start chugging, shredding, and writing music today. I hope you enjoyed this video, again special thanks to Modern Metal Songwriter for sponsoring it, also big thanks to all of my loyal Patreon members for supporting the channel, here are all of their lovely names, you can become a patron too for the low low price of $1.90 a month for all of these wonderful benefits. If you want to watch my most recent video then click right here, more guitar mod projects can be found in the top left, and if you want to subscribe to my channel, which I'd greatly appreciate, you can do that in the bottom right. The links to Modern Metal Songwriter's Clairvoyant along with my Patreon and all my social media are in the description, I'll see you next time.